Yes, now we are live. We are so excited to be live. It is a Thursday afternoon. We are coming to you. We're going to talk about films and the potential to do creative things. We're with executive producer, global businessman, all kinds of experience doing a bunch of great things. We're going to talk about all that today. David Wood, welcome from Hollywood. Hi, Beth. How are you? Great to be with you, sis. God bless you. Uh, Yes, I'm so excited that we met, and I'm so excited that we got to uh, visit on the phone, and we're going to get to visit going forward. You know, you know, we all see the film industry, and we see movies, and you know, so exciting, and and all of that. But you know, you spent a great deal of your career not a believer, manipulating the minds of America, brainwashing people, and now you're a Christian, and you're trying to undo <laughs> what you did. So let's talk about that. How is Hollywood so successful in the manipulating the minds of people? Well, you know, first off, Hollywood is a global place. So uh, it's been brainwashing the planet for over 100 years. Not only do you have the seven major studios here, but you've got all the major television networks. You have all the agents, the managers, uh, casting producers, publicists. So there's a whole system here, whether you're a movie, a TV show, an artist, uh, a basketball player, you're, it's all being managed and manipulated from Hollywood. So um, you have to kind of understand that it's just not movies, it's content and people, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, that's so, um, that's such a big picture. What does that look like on the day to day? Say somebody comes out to Hollywood, they feel like God's called them to get into the movie business and they think it's going to be, you know, this, and it's not so much that. We hear that all the time. It's, it's a lot of corruption. And I think we know that, but what happens along that process that gets people so bought into the wrong side so quickly? Well, sis, I, I think, you know, if you look at Hollywood, it's a structure that can be used for good or evil. So it depends on yeah. the person's heart. Yeah. So we have seen some very successful things happen, like Mel Gibson's Passion of the Christ, yeah. uh, some of the God's Not Dead. Some movies have done really well here. Um, and there are a lot of Christians and people of faith uh, that believe in God and Jesus uh, are here in Hollywood. It's, Hollywood's like a mission field. I think that's the best way to look at it, right? That's awesome. Is, is we don't want to be part of it, but we want to engage it and be the light. Um, but what happens, sadly, is, is a lot of people come here with these dreams and aspirations and and end up uh, compromising their themselves, their lives. I mean, look at what's going on right now with Beyonce and, and her music. I mean, it's just sad to see somebody... Uh, so in the dark side of things and promoting the dark side. So whether it's music, movies, TV, it's it's can be used for good or evil. It just depends on the people that are doing the work. Yeah. And you're also not just involved in film and movies. You're, you're a global businessman. You understand business. You've been involved in tons of philan philanthropies. <laughs> it's a mouthful word. You've been involved in a lot of um, nonprofits, and you know you've you've done you've had a lot of experience. So, how did all of that translate in you to becoming a Christian? Um, so, I I really come from the agent marketing background. That's how I started when I was a kid, and and I learned really from some of the best. And I hate to say this, but like one of my first shows was Star Search. If you remember way back, yeah, when. I do. you know, we're on five days a week. Um, and so you just start to see how they market to the world and, and so forth. Um, I was in Hollywood for 20 years working for the dark side. Um, and then luckily, blessedly, uh, God came. I had a Paul from uh, Damascus experience and actually encountered God and Jesus and Holy Spirit. And that was uh, 2002. So the last... Uh, last 20 years have been working for the right side and sadly the first 20 years i was working for the wrong side but it's important to understand both sides in order to be able to reach people so god can use your experience so yes. that you can speak to anyone 
Yeah. And I think the, the global business part of it is very important as well because, you know, filmmaking is just not all fun and games. It's, it's a business. So well, we, it, it, sorry, sis. It, it's a lot of work. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's a lot of uh, patience. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what's happened is over the last few years, I've started, you know, reaching out and I'm, you know, involved with global prayer movements and global mm -hmm. missions movements. Um, anything that's really trying to advance the kingdom of God here on earth, you know, as our humans, we have work to do here. It's, it's faith and work. Yeah. So anything that I can do, I've, I've been coming alongside a lot of organizations and trying to help them with their media and their messaging and connecting them. I'm kind of like a connector, a connector mm -hmm. for Jesus. Yeah. And what do you say to someone, you know, I'm, I'm all about purpose and I go to a lot of film festivals um, you know, we did a TV show. We won a lot of a lot of awards at, at film festivals. And what do you say to someone who feels like they could have a good impact? They could make a film. They could change the world with a story. What do you say to them about getting started and how to do that in a way that could produce success and they could change the world? I mean, there's good things happening in Hollywood, not just Hollywood, but there's a lot of film in other places. Is that correct? Yes, I mean, the, the market of content is growing everywhere. You've got like Nollywood in Nigeria. You've got Bollywood uh, in India. Um, I'm, I'm pretty bold and aggressive, sis. Like, you know, the last time I was in Cannes at the uh, the Cannes Film Festival, I'm walking around with a Jesus hat, you know, through all the events. And so I, I'm pretty bold and aggressive. And, and I would tell people that you need to be. If, if we're really believers in Jesus, then this is not the time to be hiding our light. But the world is coming to a crash and a closure. I know a lot of people are scared and are looking for hope, but we have the answer. We have the solution, and that's Christ. As mm -hmm. much as I love, you know, Donald Trump and would love to see him get elected again, I can't trust in man. We have to trust in Jesus. And, and so that's always the message that I always try and tell anybody uh, whatever they're doing, whether it's running a ministry or, or trying to make a movie, we have to have our faith and we need to lead with God. Well, and, and back on the purpose thing, maybe you're not going to make a movie. Maybe you want to write a book. Maybe you sure. want to become an artist. Maybe you want to become a teacher. You have a sense of purpose. Yeah. You know, there's this cloud out in the world that says, oh, just hover down. Wait till everything gets normal again. But we've got to be the ones that lead out front and center. And what do you say to someone who thinks things may calm down again? Because they're not going to. So, you know, I, I have some good news and I have some bad news. And I'll, I'll give you the bad news first. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm writing a, my next book, which will be my fifth one, is on this whole topic of where we're at today. Uh, the world's not going to become normal again. We're in the last days of the end of days. Um, the world is crashing. Uh, we've got global... Uh, pandemics going on. We got global food shortages going on. We've got water problems, heat problems uh, in all over the United States and different countries. We've got pedophile rings. We've got pornography. Uh, I mean, we really, it's like the, it's going to be worse than the days of Noah. I mean, we are in such sin and such corruption, especially here in the United States. This country has forgotten who God is. So we need to be prepared as believers that the time is short. Um, and I would even say maybe eight, 10 years. I, I don't think we have a lot of time left. I mean, we're decimating uh, the forests, the uh, the insect and the bee. 90% um, mm -hmm. of the bee population is gone. And, you know, there's a circle of life and you need all these animals and things to be working right. together. So mm -hmm. a lot of people, I don't think, actually understand what's going on in the world. And I really think we as Christians need to lead, as you said, and we need to wake up and we need to get about the father's business. Well, and that leads to another question. And I think we talked about this a little earlier is people don't know what to believe. You know, people don't know where to look to find out more about what to believe. There's no um, non-political news. I mean, there are some. I think you sent true news and there's some things like that. But I think part of the paralyzation of the people comes from not knowing what's real. So, you know, you, you, the political environment is so bad. 
that yeah. you can't believe either side, can't believe anything anybody says. So people don't know what to do because people don't know what's real or what's not real. Does that make sense? I mean, how do people come up with what to do based in, I don't know what's really happening. Well, I think that's why it's important that you're praying and you're getting in the will of God. Like we all yeah. need to do that daily, right? Yeah. So we understand Amen. what the Lord's doing, what he wants to do with us, because that's yeah. the only thing we can really trust. I think you also have to, you know, link arms with fellow believers that are serious about their faith. Yeah. I think you've got to get, you know, the wagon circled. You've got to get your family and the ones you love should be your main priorities. And then mm -hmm. we've got to go out and be the light um, that Jesus has called us to be. So I think it's it's got to start with reading the Bible. What's your prayer life like? I mean, the answers mm -hmm. of Jesus and, and hope are in there. It's not on a TV screen. It's not on CNN. I mean, those guys are working for Satan. But if you can get to Jesus and focus on the Holy Spirit and activate daily the Holy Spirit in your life, I think that's where you're going to find that peace and that calm and understand uh, what the will is of God for our lives, right? Yes, and I was just reading this morning about wisdom and the promise of wisdom. And, you, you know, maybe it's true that the less we know, the better, because the more we pray, the more we receive wisdom, and God's going to impart in us what to do. I like to say who we are prompts what we do. We're not human beings, we're human we're not human beings, we're human beings. So who we are prompts what we do. So we have to get back to who we are in Christ, yeah. ready for where we are right now, yeah. that's going to prompt what we do. And I, I think basically what you're saying is forget the news, get to the good news, and then you're going to know what to do. I mean, sis, I think this is, a, is a, an exciting time to be alive. I mean, we're going to see the greatest harvest of souls ever. We're here and God's using us. To, to do his work in a time when the world is becoming so dark and so nasty. I mean, I hate to use that word. And the exciting thing for us is it's a lot easier to talk about God now because people are so desperate for answers and so hungry mm -hmm. for answers because they can't find answers. And, yeah. and I fi I'm finding it a lot easier to talk about Jesus now than mm -hmm. ever. I mean, I've been in Hollywood promoting Jesus, marketing, loving Jesus for 20 years and it's a lot easier, I find out. People are looking for answers. We just need to be bold and talk about our faith and, and that we have the answer, and it's Jesus Christ. That's so very, very true, and I find that to be, oh, I know what I was getting ready to say. I was like, wait, I had a point, and I lost it. But So you don't, evil's not hiding anymore. Evil is out front and center. You don't have to think, oh, my gosh, is that Satan or no? Yeah, yeah pedophilia, all this crazy stuff about sexualization of children. It's that's just obviously evil. It's wrong on every level. Yeah. And so I think it's become more acceptable to talk about it because unless you're the ones participating in it, you see it and it's, it's not hiding anymore. Well, you, you've got two things happening, right? You've got Jesus and the light and us, the church growing and expanding like there, there's yeah. missions like china with the underground church in china is booming right yeah. even though it's asleep at the wheel here in the united states i mean there are some good churches but the church globally is is doing its job and it's going to keep doing that but the dark side is also expanding and satan's not caring anymore what people know or don't know he's right. all it's everybody all hands on deck the christian church needs to get out there and do its job but Satan and his Satanists, Illuminati, Freemasons, whatever you want to call them, they're doing the same thing. So you're going to see these two forces coming together and crashing where people are going to have to make a decision one way or the other. Either you're going to follow Jesus or you're going to follow sin and your flesh and, and your selfishness, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, so you've got a project that's very exciting. You're able to take all of your business experience, all of your filmmaking experience, and you've got this movement coming, the resurrection yeah. of Jesus uh, Christ. Thank you. How did that come? I mean, how did, how did you decide to make a 3D film about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which sounds great? Well, you know, sis, after the success of The Passion of Christ, you know, for yeah. Mel, 
I mean, a lot of people know it was a financial success, but it was also a spiritual success. A lot wow. of people uh, learned who Jesus was. A lot of Muslims actually were going into the movie theaters to see that the Jews were going to get bashed. And, and then they saw what happened to Jesus and they just got radically saved. Um, this next film, we're hoping to kind of continue the story. So it's, it's now the resurrection. It's Jesus ascending. We're going to show heaven and hell, the spiritual realms. We're going to show the angels and demons, you know, staying to the biblical story as best as we can. But we're going to show the, the supernatural. Um, and I think once people see how beautiful heaven is, I mean, I've never been there, but I'm trying to make it look as great as we can. Um, there's lots of books and the Bible talks about it a lot. And then to show how scary hell is and to show those two extremes and that this is where everyone is going to end up. You're either going to heaven or you're going to hell, depending on your uh, experience and your, your decision with Jesus. Yeah. So there's a lot of very powerful things in the movie that I think are going to be a wake up call. Uh, we're, we're trying to obviously show three things that Jesus is God because all the other religions just think he's a man and a prophet where we know yeah. that he is God. Uh, second, that it, Jesus is the way to heaven and to the Father, uh, God. And then we're going to show the radical differences between heaven and hell. So I think for a movie audience, um, you know, they're so used to these, you know, Harry Potter witchcraft films and the Marvel comic books and all their nonsense of fake and false things. So to be able to actually show the spiritual realms properly, I think uh, will be a, a huge success for the project. And so what's the timeline of the project? Oh boy. So, you know, sis, when you're working for God, as you know, it, it's, it's one day at a time, right? Like yeah. I, we, we've, we've got the script done. So it's up on the website. People can go take a look at it if they want. Um, we're raising money now, investors, uh, we're taking donations, sponsors, um, we've got to get all the funds together. Mm -hmm. We're trying to keep this project away from Hollywood. Uh, I don't want, we don't want Hollywood involved at all. So we're going to do this ourselves, marketing, distribution, production, and we're just going to pull out all the right Christian believers and, and people to help us. Uh, we've been doing events around the world. God told me to start marketing this project. Normally, you make a movie first, and then you go and market it. But God told us to do it the other way around. So we've been probably over the last six, seven years sponsored every major Christian, you know, when pastors get together, evangelicals and Catholics. And so we're trying to get this film out to the church, let people know that the movie's coming, and then using the church partnering with the church using is probably not a good word but partnering with the church around the world to then help us release the movie once we get into production and when you say we who is we you have a team yeah so we've, we're building a team um we've been doing prayer calls now for about five years um throughout the week which is important that was one of the problems that mel had uh and the team from the passion is they got their butts kicked spiritually they, they had so many things happen uh, Jim Caviezel uh, on the cross, you know, playing Jesus and lightning strikes him twice in a row. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. yeah. so they, and then Mel sadly had some problems after the movie was released and, and a lot of people were picking on him. So, you know, the spiritual part of this has always been our first thing in the back of our heads is how do we deal with this and an enemy that doesn't want to see the, the true story of who Jesus is and, and that he's alive. And then, you know, just pulling out the right partners around the world that are running you know christian organizations that understand evangelism this movie is about evangelism it's about jesus right so as much as we're going to love this movie being on the screens and churches and theaters we want the movie to be used as a discipleship and evangelism tool so there'll be a lot of that ministry side going on and we're hoping people will bring their unsaved brother or sister or parent or boss from work to watch the movie that's the movie the church is going to come to this movie no matter what but the movie's really for the world we want to show the world who jesus really is and and that's the important part of, of a lot of this and when do you anticipate it will be yeah. a movie where people so you know like it, it's going to take the production side from the budget like when you actually start filming casting filming um we're still probably two years away. 
I, I can't start major production until all the money's in. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I don't want to freak it, your audience out, but we believe this movie is going to come out during tribulation. And I believe tribulation is just around the corner. So I think maybe two, three years from now, we'll all be able to sit and watch this film. But mm -hmm. I'm not quite there yet and we're not starting production until we have all the funds in and god tells us to go because it's yeah. it's god's movie it's not mine yeah i just work for god. that's a good he's a good boss to have so he's the best boss. so you talk about tribulation you know my dad he's been married i mean he's been dead <clears throat> excuse me um decades and he used to say, oh, we're in the end times. And, you know, I think that's another thing people people really wrestle with is, you know, God says you don't know. Even Jesus won't know. How can you predict? I mean, what are you using as your indicators to predict that we're going to be in the end times within two to ten years? So we, we definitely, you know, it's very clear in the Bible. We won't know the day or the hour. Mm -hmm. But that's that's the final day and the final hour. I can get us pretty close to the year. And what I've been doing is a ton of research. I've written books on this. And my newest book will explain this, you know, easily. But I'll try and give you the two-minute version. So we take all the Bible prophecy and everything that's going on in the Bible because the Bible is our main source. Mm -hmm. But then you start adding all the other pieces, like the United Nations, which is the most demonic entity on the planet. They have a 15-year millennium plan, and right on their website, anybody can go there after your show and, and go look, they're talking about implementing the mark of the beast. They're, they're, they're giving it nicer words, and they're making it sound, we're going to get you food, we're going to give you water, you just got to connect to the bigger. But it's, it'll actually be the UN that enforces the mark of the beast with the nations. The nation's under contract with the UN. To be part of the UN, you have to do what they say to do. Then you add what's going on with the WHO, World Health Organization. You add what's going on with uh, the Federal Reserve, the U.S. financial system. You add the pharmaceutical industry. Half of, let's use the United States, half of the Americans are on drugs here. Everybody's whacked out on drugs. Then you have the other part of the drug system of cocaine and all these illegal drugs being flooded into the, the nations. And we have a whole generation of kids dying and on drugs. Then you add the manipulation of the media. Then you add what's going on with pornography and so on. And so you just you take all of these little pieces of what Satan's doing in the dark side and you start putting them all together with the Bible prophecy. And now you start seeing that we're actually in the times. Yeah. Um, and there's two big things that I, I want to add in. I want people to go research this because I don't want them to just listen to me and believe it. The, the ozone layer that surrounds the earth that protects us from the sun, there's huge holes in it. There's one over both of the, the polar Antarctica. Um, and this is why the, the ice is melting so quickly. This is affecting the temperatures of the sky and, and the planet. There's a reason why we're going through these heat um, because the planet is literally roasting itself because the sun has been getting through the ozone layers. The governments and the media don't want to talk about it because they don't want to scare the public. But if you do enough research, you're going to find that out. The second problem is we're decimating the, the animal and the insect population. We've lost so many species and the fish in the oceans, there's actually dead zones. They call them dead zones in the ocean where there's no plankton, there's no coral, there's nothing living. Yeah. And so you start adding these earth shattering problems where we're past the tipping point of fixing them. We can't even fix this stuff. And you start putting all that against the Bible prophecies and where we are with the Bible. And I don't think, sis, to be honest with you, I'll be surprised if the earth lasts 10 years. I believe Jesus has to return to save us because if he doesn't return soon, there's going to be nothing left to return to. I think that we have taken God's earth. His, he entrusted us, the animals, the plants, the earth, and we have messed it up. We have destroyed it. We have been very selfish. And so there's a lot of these things going on in the world 
then you add, I believe World War Three has started in Ukraine. You know, you've got NATO, Russia, Ukraine. Now you've got this thing going on in Taiwan with China. These are, these are, this is all going to turn into World War Three. Just like how World War One started with two nations and everybody had to pick a side. World War Two mm -hmm. started with two nations and Hitler. And so the same thing is going on. World War Three has started, I believe. Yeah. So with all that heavy stuff and you know we all see little pieces of that in the news and we're like ah, i don't want to know anything i don't want to. so revival god's going to send a revival to save souls because he he wishes that none would perish so before all that happens good things are coming for god's people and well, therefore we got to be getting god's people on god's people's team right yeah, and I think it's it's also during all of this. This stuff's all happening now. But right. I think revival has started already. We're yeah. seeing nations that never used to love God, and they're now on fire for God. Um, I think that God— And that's, going... that's, that's China? That's Iran? I mean, what nations are those? Because well, people don't know them. Yeah. China's actually, this is going to freak everybody out, but China's actually the largest Christian nation now. There's about 135 million Chinese Christians, underground church in China. Wow. So, and, and that's, you know, China's a billion some people. So you've got 135 real Christians in China that just people don't even know. Uh, right. Iran, the Christian church is booming. Um, so there's, there's key areas, countries that have been either communist or locked down or demonic that the, the church is exploding and that's usually what happens right whenever there's uh, problems issues people are on their knees praying and that's right. that's exactly. what that's what the united states needs to do we need to repent and we need to get on our knees that's the only way anything's going to get done here yeah. but you've got only a, a handful of people doing that and then you've got the rest of the country the united states and they're just being selfish so this yeah. place is going to get judged sodom and gomorrah it's like the modern day sodom and gomorrah Whew, that's all scary. But in the meantime, we've got a purpose to live. Yes. God's gifted us with what we need to go out and make the difference in the world. And that's what he's called you to do by making films. Me to do same thing. We do films, we do interviews, we do books, all that. So we've got to yes, raise sis. up our army. Yes, sorry, sis. We, we can't get distracted by the problems. The problems, right. let's forget that now. That's done. The exciting news is get close to Jesus, get into your prayer closet, read the Bible every day. God will show you. God will take care of us. God never said it was going to be easy, but he would be with us through it. And that's yeah. what we need to focus on. The greatest harvest of souls. We need to finish well on planet Earth. All of us, we're going to heaven, right? So this is just a small stop on the journey of our lives. We, we live forever. So for 40, 50, 60, 80, 100 years, however long you get on earth, you're in heaven after that. And that's yeah. the greatest place, period. But while we're here on earth, we got to do God's work. We got to stay positive. We got to encourage people. There's a whole group of non believers that have no idea what's going on. And, and we've got to be that light and that hope for them. Yeah, we got to share our stories that share our people stories. can hear. Yeah. So for people to reach out and get in touch with you, um the resurrection of jesus christ.com yes please anybody the resurrection of jesus christ.com is the website you can see the business plan up there the scripts up there uh there's videos of us we'll put this video up there as well sis and Good. uh yeah and so just wanted to thank you and bless you today sister uh, thank I, you. Love, I love your work thank you for having me on the show today and we got to lock arms, and these are serious times. It's going to take serious people for Jesus. And that's why we come together and encourage one another, tell yeah. everybody to keep it up, keep up the faith, because God is faithful. That's right. Amen. All right. Well, we're going to we're gonna uh, end here, and we'll come back and do this again, and you can keep us posted on the movie. And uh, it's been great talking to you today, and uh, we'll look forward to doing this again. Thank you, sis. Thank you for blessing Thank you. Thank you for blessing me.